This is Sandra Osterberis with CFOIC Heartland. Welcome to OFRA. When you explore Israel with Christian friends of Israeli communities, you explore Israel with the Bible in hand. There's really nothing more exciting, more exhilarating than walking with the Bible and letting it come alive because the land is part of the, is part of the story. Of course, you know, all the actors in the Bible, all the, all the heroes of the Bible, they're walking this land. They're intimately familiar with it. We learn it. We're so distant sometimes we forget the connection to the land. So here we are walking in the mountains of Shomron on the mountains of Benjamin, uh, north of Jerusalem, and we're here in the year, what year is it? 2020, right? But we're stepping back, stepping back almost 4,000 years to the days of Abraham. And we go to Genesis 13. And here we have the story where Abraham and Sarah have gone down to Egypt, and they're coming back up from Egypt. And we, the, the, the Bible tells us in Genesis 13 that it's Abraham and Sarah uh, and they're coming up with their nephew, with, with, uh, with his nephew Lot. Uh, and they come here to the highland. How do we know where they were? The Bible tells us. Right near Beit El, Beth El, where Abraham had built a, uh, a, 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 an altar when he came into the land, when God said, go to the land that I will show you. Where are we standing right now? We're right near Beit El, off in the hills here. Now, why would this be the place where the, where the story that happens in Genesis 13, I'm going to tell you to look it up so you know, it has to be in a high place. Because this is the place in Genesis 13, if you recall, as I'm sure you do, that the shepherds of Lot, Abraham's nephew, and the shepherds of Abraham are having a problem. They, there's, they're, well, they're doing very well. There's too much sheep and flocks between them, uh, and there's not enough space here for them uh, to get along peacefully. And unfortunately, we're going to get a splitting of the ways, uh, a parting of the ways, of Abraham and his nephew Lot. Uh, and we're told that here in the area of Beit El, uh, Abraham says to his nephew Lot, look, it's not good that we should be together and that our, and there was quarreling. In verse 7, there was quarreling between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and those of Lot's cattle. And in verse 8, Abram said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me, between my herdsmen and yours, for we are kinsmen. Is not the whole land before you? Let us separate. If you go north, I will go south. If you go south, I will go north. Now, Lot looks about him, and we can tell where they had to be standing based on what he sees. It has to be in a very high place near Beit El, and I don't know if you can see behind me, at the other end of this mountain where we're standing right now, you see some of those uh, military uh, radar installations. That's the highest mountain in the area here. So we know it's got to be in this area. I would have taken you up there, but I don't think the army would exactly like us to knock on their radar and say, hi, can we come take a look? We want to read some biblical, uh, biblical verses. So we're here at the slopes of Tel Baal Chatzor, as it's known, and I can see, and when you come here with Christian Friends of Israeli Communities, you will see it also, I can see the other side of the Jordan River. I'm looking down at the Jordan River Valley, down towards where the Jordan River flows, to the mountains of Ammon, up to the land of Gilead, down to Moab uh, and Edom on the other side, and down Going to the east and then a little south, we get to Sodom, the area of Sodom. And you know from your text, what does Lot do? Lot looks around. He looks down as I'm looking down right now, and he can see down there. It's fertile and it's green. And as the Bible tells us, it's before Sodom has been destroyed. And he chooses, he says, you know what? Abraham had said, if you go north, I'll go south. If you go south, I'll go north. He's going to go to the east and down where it's fertile, where there's a lot of material wealth and goods. Uh, and he chooses to go down there. Now we know, and we might assume that Lut knows, that the people who live in the area of Sodom and Gomorrah are not the kind of people you want to be with. These are people whose values have gotten terribly mixed up, uh, who have become evil people, and it's all about the materialism. And Lot will be unfortunately attracted to the materialism down in the Fertile Valley. Uh, and this is the site where Abraham and Lot will separate, where they're going to part ways. Abraham, who's also doing very well uh, materially, 
is essentially saying, I'm going to stay here where the human spirit uh, is in the right place, where I, can, where I can connect to God. Lot's going to say, you know what, I'm going to go down to the valley uh, where there's richness, even though there's terrible evil down there. And as we know, the rest of the story, of course, as I say, the rest is history, uh, the terrible things that will happen down uh, in Sodom. But as we're up here, it comes alive again. You know, you sit in the classroom and learn these verses. Okay, it's very nice. It's very interesting. You sit up here. I can, I can, I can see Lot. I can just see, I can see Lot and Abraham. They're standing up here on the mountain looking down. Where should we go? Abraham will choose the mountain areas where people's values are more uh, intact, where they understand their relationship to God. Lot hears the siren call uh, of the fertile valley down below and will make his way down to Sodom, to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and those names resonate down here over 4,000 years. We know Sodom and Gomorrah is another word for evil, and that's where Lot will end up. So here is the parting of the ways. Really happens, really, essentially here, but almost 4,000 years ago. standing here in Ophrah, right on this mountain that we refer to as Tel Bal Chatzor. And Danny was just pointing out to you that highest part of the mountain with the military installation. Well, there is a fabulous story about how this community started, this community of Ophrah started. The year is 1974. The Yom Kippur War has just ended. And actually, that whole experience of the Yom Kippur War was an enormous catalyst to get the settlement movement back on its feet. The, right after the Six-Day War in 1967 and 1968, we saw a little bit of movement in Judea. But there had been nothing going on in Samaria. In fact, at this point in time, in 1974, there wasn't a single Jew living north of Jerusalem. Well, this group of people got together. They realized we have abandoned this whole area. Since 1967, we have this land. Why have we not settled anywhere north of Jerusalem? We haven't settled in Benjamin. We have not settled in Samaria. And so they decided this area looks like a good area. Let's start a community. But of course, at that time, the government was not at all open to this idea. So they had a plan. Up there on Tel Bal Chatzor was a military camp like today. And that camp was actually looking for some employees. They needed some all kinds of manual labor done. They needed a fence built. They needed a little bit of electricity work done. And they were looking for simple laborers. Well, this group of people found out about it and they say, hey, let's go apply for the job. And they applied for the job and they got it and they started building a fence. Now I have to tell you, I don't know how many of those people actually knew how to build a fence. They were, some of them were teachers and some of them were Talmud scholars. They didn't really know what they were doing, but they figured, okay, this is a way to get started. So they go up there and they do this work and then they go to the army and they say, you know what? The roads here at that time were really awful. We're having a hard time commuting back and forth to Jerusalem. Can you provide us with a bit of housing? Doesn't have to be f fancy, just some housing over there in the, in the base so that we don't have to travel to Jerusalem every day. And the army said, sounds like a reasonable thing. That's what we're gonna do. And they gave them housing and they started, you know, settling. And where was the housing? Right down in this area, actually down below us. That's where the housing was. It wasn't up on that mountain. Okay, so they got housing here in the middle of the camp. And uh, then after a week or so, they said, you know what? It's really hard for us to be living here in this housing away from our families. We've left our wives, we've left our children. And they said to the army, how about we bring our families to live here too? The army couldn't say no, it was a perfectly legitimate suggestion. And so they brought their families up here. And guess what? Without even anyone suspecting, you had a Jewish community. And they called themselves Ofra. And this was the first Jewish community established in modern times after the Six Day War. Amazing what happened here. And of course, they, that was just the beginning. Eventually, someone in the government woke up and said, oh my goodness, we have a community here. It took time, there was a lot of politics, but eventually they were able to build a beautiful community. And we're gonna go take a look at that now too. 
So just below me, you can see the entire community of Ofra spread out before us. 700 families live in Ofra today. We have some of the most important leaders in the settlement movement that have been living here, that among their founders. It is an amazing community. And of course, we have many young families, children, etc. This is a place that has for a long time remained a leader of the settlement movement. They have a wonderful school here, a high school for girls, brings girls here from all over the region, and an amazing humanitarian project, Heart of Benjamin, which draws children with a whole variety of handicaps to come here to their afternoon, weekend programs, and a whole, uh, so, whole variety of other things that they are providing for handicapped children and their families. Uh, one of the things that I would like to point out about Ofra in particular is its, its expanse. You see here on the one hand, Ofra is a community like many others. People live in their houses. It's kind of a suburban kind of thing. But because of the expanse, we also have some agriculture here. So we have some people here who are growing uh, grapes. We have some vineyards. We have other things. And just recently, we planted a, a new... Uh, grove of trees in memory of Dvir Sorek, a young boy who lived here in this community and unfortunately was murdered just a few months ago as he was returning from Jerusalem to his school in Judea. The people of Ofra have handled and faced all kinds of challenges, but they are here to stay. This is Ofra. I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'd like to be sure you're getting all of our video content. So just click on the subscribe button below, as well as on the notification bell. And that way you will have easy access to all our material. We look forward to staying in touch with you. God bless you and have a wonderful day.